Are you afraid to install a darker colored shingle on your roof because you're afraid it's going to make your whole house hotter? A few years ago in San Antonio, they actually started a program where the government was paying homeowners to replace their roofs with lighter colored shingles. And the idea behind that was that the lighter colored shingles wouldn't allow so much heat buildup inside the house so that the energy costs to cool the house would be lower. But if anybody should know a thing or two about roofing material in hot weather, it should be a roofer in Florida. And so what I've done is I've invited Derek to come on with me. Derek owns a roofing company down in Orlando, and he's going to talk to us about roofing materials in hot weather, not just shingles, but other types of roofing material as well, as well, darker versus lighter. Derek, kind of What's your what's your hot take one sentence on darker versus lighter to kind of kick us off? The kind of kick us off is the without a spoiler alert is <laughs> to say that I think you're going to find by the end of this video that you may want to just think about the way your house looks and the overall character and feel of the shingle before we start worrying about the overall temperature inside. Yeah. So I mean I being up here in Colorado, I kind of imagine that Florida, just the style of houses and stuff and just the look, you know, you've got the beaches and everything that everybody would want a lighter colored roof, but what's what's the reality? So the reality is trend and the trend says the most popular shingle that flies off the shelf at the distributor is black. Black, black shingles in the sunshine state. And uh, that gets backed up by pewter and dark grays and it moves along down to the lighter gray tones. So the, it stays pretty dark. But why? What, why Why? do you think that is? I mean, I know nationwide black is the most popular color, but in your area, why? It's trend. It's just the way you know people get online and they look at the way houses look and they want their houses to look a certain way. Um, they aren't necessarily thinking about where the picture of the home they're looking at is, more about how they want their home to look. So even the builders and the architects are still sticking with the trend of dark colors right now. So this trend of painting houses a dark gray with the black shingle is happening in Florida, just like it is everywhere else. So people are definitely not trying to stay in the sunshine state and only buy white roofs or even have a state policy that would say such a thing, you know. It's very unique that that's a, that exists in, in the U.S. When you're going out and meeting with a homeowner, are they asking you, hey, you know, I really would like a black roof, but is it going to make my house hotter? Do they ask you that question? Yeah, it, that question comes up nine times out of 10 where it, it's typically a couple scenario when one person is saying we shouldn't and the other person really wants a black roof because let's be honest, it's just keeping up with the Joneses. So that question comes up quite often where people are concerned because black means heat and heat means higher electrical bill. Okay, but what's the reality? Are you are you actually seeing anything that demonstrates that having a darker colored roof is gonna increase your energy bills? So the reality is when you're working on the roof, it's noticeable. So <laughs> I have literally, TMI, burned the edge of my leg and it looks like a sunburn um, on my bottom. And uh, those black shingles get hot. Now, the heat transferring, and they're not reflecting it like a lighter shingle. That's that's whole issue is reflection. So the heat will build up, and then it's going to transfer to the attic. So once it transfers to the attic, you'll see if you take a house that has a white shingle and the same house, you turn it black, you're only going to see an average of a 10-degree difference between the two shingles, believe it or not, in the attic before we even get inside the house. So then once we rely on insulation, that variance in temperature of 10 degrees typically does not transfer below because of insulation. Now with older homes where that insulation is starting to collapse on itself and getting thinner and it's losing its R value, you're gonna notice a difference inside regardless of it's light or dark about the mm -hmm. only thing that would be the saving grace is if it's a really, really white shingle, which asphalt shingles, there's no white, white shingle out there. Yeah. Well, now you, before we got on, you told me that uh, you had actually put a heat gun, you know, yeah. a temperature gun on some shingles. Yeah. Tell me so, kind of 
how that so, in out. the beginning of this season, um, it was getting real hot and the feels like was over 105, getting up to 108. And I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna put everything outside in the parking lot and just leave it out there all day to see what happens. And uh I went back hours later and I was kind of shocked at the temperature difference. We were getting real high on temperatures, and there was quite a difference on the surface now of a dark versus a light. There is definitely it's holding versus reflecting. It's holding the heat. So that is a thing. But like I said, it's that transfer of heat that's going to affect your energy bill. Now, that's that's interesting that you mentioned that there you found such a big difference because um, I was watching another video from a roofer. I can't remember the name of it. We'll link to it in the description. But um, so he did the same thing, right? So he built a, a little roof slope, put it out in the parking lot. Uh, at 11 o'clock in the morning, it was 77 degrees, right. took a reading, and he had black and pewter, so, you know, a lighter colored gray, and the temperature difference wasn't that much, and he just kept checking it throughout the day, and there was really not that big of a swing between okay. the two colors. It, yeah. I thought it was pretty interesting, because we get asked that question he, even here in Colorado all the time, well, if I put a darker colored shingle on my house is that going to make my house hotter yeah and i personally i've never seen anything that demonstrates that it does well what i've noticed with customers is that from if they compare august to last year to this year on their power bill without a new roof they're going to see an increase in power just because we have had rate increases you know with oh, good point yep so the numbers have gone up so if a customer had a light colored roof last year and now they have a dark colored roof and they're only thinking of the roof change, they're going to blame it on the shingle. But the science behind it says, and it's really the insulation guys that do most of the experimenting with this, is to say that your energy envelope on your house is all based on that R rating of that insulation. And you had mentioned earlier that in your state it was um, R49. I think so. And that's, and that's it's probably... That's really high. I I would be shocked that Florida wasn't there, but you know we're typically around R30. But we calculate each individual house as it's built. But I typically see around R30. Heat transferring through R30, it's if it's done properly, yeah. it's just not going to pass that. It's not going to make it to the inside. What do so, you see though for different kind of roofing materials like metal, uh, uh, like a a dark brown or a dark green? metal right. roof versus a white metal roof yeah and the interesting thing about metal if you only look at the reflective rating and how that metal performs and you go to the darkest shingle uh excuse me the darkest colored paint to the lightest colored paint you're not looking at a very much of a difference of re reflectiveness because metal does an excellent job reflecting the heat even black metal it's going to reflect pretty good but those surface temperatures on metal just as hot i mean it gets unbearably hot to work on a black metal roof in Florida. Mm -hmm. It's the transfer of heat. It's the insulation that's really going to make the difference on the envelope. It's mm -hmm. what you're going to see on that thermostat, what you're going to see on that power bill. Um, so when it comes to metal, the biggest thing that I've seen help with metal, even white metal is a radiant barrier, putting the radiant barrier under the roof and, you know, just helping one more layer of protecting that, keeping that heat mm -hmm. transfer. When you say the envelope, you're, you're talking about the attic, correct? So just the the, inner, the insulation envelope. So it's the walls. If you're not on a slab, it would be the floor um, gotcha. and the uh, attic insulation. So what, what role do you think that rooftop ventilation, attic ventilation plays in all of this? Huge. So uh, if the attic's not breathing down here, you have some serious problems. Um, that heat has to have somewhere to go. If, if everything's functioning the way it should be, it's building up that static pressure and that heat is just blowing as if, you know, it's almost like a breeze coming out of that attic. There's yeah. so much pressure. So if it's done properly, it's that's going to be the key. Insulation and ventilation. So if those two things aren't happening, that house is going to get hot. You're going to have that, that section of the house where everybody's complaining this is the hottest room in the house. It's not just a coincidence. It's something going on with that insulation and the ventilation. And I know you've done some great videos on ventilation and just the importance of ventilation is huge, huge with energy efficiency.
Yeah, well, so for our viewers, if you want to see a video about ventilation, just click that link over there, right above Derek's head. <laughs> and uh, you can watch and get some information about attic ventilation, why it's so important for your roof. All right, so many of the shingle manufacturers, Derek, they make solar reflective shingles or energy star shingles or energy conserving shingles, right. they call it. And those are a premium shingle. I mean, the, the cost associated with that is quite a bit higher than a regular shingle. What do you think of those? Are they worth it in your opinion? Kind of. You know, I'm not going to name names on manufacturers because I, I don't feel like I have enough data to really prove what I'm saying. But when I read the literature on what they're trying to accomplish, some of the manufacturers are even leaning on the fact that they won't have as much algae buildup because the algae buildup is going to affect the reflectiveness of that shingle. So they felt like if they can find a solution for that algae, then this roof will stay reflective longer. So charging a customer for that when they already have algae resistance, to me, doesn't seem like it's solving a problem. I don't want to pay extra for something I can have anyways, because mm -hmm. I noticed that some of the manufacturers that are claiming to have more reflectiveness, it's still a dark shingle. So that would, to me was very interesting because I thought that they were going to only release light colors, but some of them have some really dark colors. Have yeah. you noticed that as well? Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. Noticed that. Yeah. So if we just think, I know that you're a certainty guy. If you just look at the Flint Lastic, they have a white, white, white mod bit, you know, peel and stick roof that, you know, commercial roof or flat roof. And it has the energy star rating. But then right next to it is just a very light, light, light gray. It's, it's white. The color is white. I think the other one's glacier white. Forgive me if I'm wrong. But even between the two of those, one of them's energy star and the other one's not the percentage of difference between each one is so minute. I just find it hard to pay extra for something that is just a tiny bit of difference. I don't yeah. think we're making a big enough difference no. on our electric bill as we would to just spend more money on insulation and ventilation. Yeah. So for homeowners that live in really hot climates like the Gulf States, like Texas, like Arizona, is there a shingle that you think really makes a difference in how much heat gets into the home? I think that it's not the shingle place. And I think it's not designed to do that as much as insulation. So I'm just going to hit it home again to say, spend that extra money on having someone blow in extra installation of doing a better calculation on what you got. If it's been old and it's settled, just making sure everything's in place before you spend more money on what our shingle manufacturers are selling us. So in summary, your, your position would be insulation and ventilation is more important than what color shingle you're putting on the roof. Yeah. Maybe, maybe spend a little bit more money on like a solar attic fan or, or something that's going to change up and our, even if it's just an electric fan that's hardwired, something that's going to pull that air out of the attic before we go spending more money on a marketing campaign to say that these products are doing something that they may or may not do. And for us to prove them right or wrong would take quite a bit of the uh, science experiment, you know? Yeah, good point. Yeah. Hey, if you already checked out the video that I mentioned earlier about ventilation, but you want to watch another exciting video about ventilation, click on this video right here. And if you need some information about how to maintain the roof that you've already got, watch this playlist right down here.